Hi everybody, Jake here. Welcome to the video. Welcome to the channel. If you're new, we're back with another episode of Lil Legends, the second episode of Season 2. And we are off to a flyer this season. There's plenty to get into. We've got a huge Champions League tie against Napoli. I'll run you through how the league's gone so far, as well as how our Champions League group has gone so far in our first season in this save in the Champions League, which ultimately is the aim of the save, to win the Champions League at some point. So hopefully we can get off to a good start here, get some money in the club, and get the ball rolling. Now, in the first episode of season two, I did mention that I take names in the comments and we put them on the youth and take players, so I'll show you all of them later too. You channel viewers who are now in the game, hopefully you'll get a kick out of that and who knows, maybe one day you'll make the first team. So with that being said, before we get into today's video, I'm just gonna ask you guys, if you could, then smash the like button. You guys have been killing it recently. If we can aim for 40 likes yet again, that'll be awesome. Feel free to hop into the comments section. It's always nice to hear from you guys and it's really nice interaction with you all. It's one of my favorite parts of creating these videos. And if you don't have anything to say and you wanna help boost the algorithm, then uh, usually we comment a player's name. So today, let's go for Anel Akmus. Don't just put Anel, please don't put Anel in my comments. Actually, you know what, go for it. As long as you spell it right, just please spell it right, guys. Can you imagine someone new coming into the channel, just heading into the comments and seeing that name spelt wrong? All in the comments they're gonna think something weird's going on over here and finally if you guys are enjoying this kind of content and smash the subscribe button as we push for 1700 subscribers soon it'll be 2k i hope and you guys are getting us towards that so right now the goal will be 1700 subscribers so if you are enjoying the content and you haven't hit the button yet then feel free to do so and smash that notification bell too my upload schedule is all over the place at the minute with how uni is for me so if you hit that at least you won't miss out on any of my uploads and finally last thing i promise we do have a link to a discord in the description where a lot of you guys have joined there's 30 plus members now we have chats for football manager tips and showing off your saves as well as just a general chat about real life football or anything in general if you want to connect on a more regular basis with me and some other really nice people who are in there and i think i've said all the stuff i need to and we can get straight into today's video so as you know we are managing lil and things are going pretty well in this second season you last saw us the only loss that we've had so far in this series on camera it was in the european super cup we got battered but Arezo basically helped us look okay at least. Since then, we've absolutely smashed it, guys. Honestly, the league, our form has been perfect. Champions League group, we've been very good. Our group contains Celtic, Napoli, and who was the other one? PSV. So you can see, first of all, we won all three of our first games. Doing very well, but then we did lose 4-2 to PSV and our only loss this season outside of the Super Cup. But overall, the league is going insane, including a 3-2 win against PSG. Now, you're probably looking at all the greens and only a couple of draws in the league and thinking we must be smashing it. Yes, we are, but PSG are so hard to compete with. Like, I think we're having an amazing season and we'll do well to ever perform better than this. But even 14 games in, we haven't even given ourselves a gap in case we mess up later. We're literally only one point ahead of PSG, who have still got more goal difference than us, have only lost one game. We've actually lost zero, so we're still unbeaten. And PSG have drew one and we have drew two. So we're literally the only loss that has been inflicted on PSG. If that had gone the other way, it would have been our only loss and they would be unbeaten. So it's a very close, tight league in this season and we'll do very well to win it. But this season, I want to push them all the way. We looked like about halfway through last season that we were going to do that and then we completely slipped off due to a lack of squad depth and is going into more important matches in the Europa League that clearly took our interest more. But yeah, I'm hoping we can keep up with them as well as put up a decent fight in the Champions League where it looks like things going well today. We should be part of the round of 16, the knockout rounds in the Champions League, which will bring a hell of a lot of money and obviously the chance there that we can eventually push up and maybe, you know, get a cheeky quarterfinal, semi-final, then you, who knows what's going to happen. This series will end when we win the Champions League. So if we somehow do it in our first season in the Champions League, then this series will end, but I very much doubt that. Our Champions League group, however, is very close. I mean, as you can see, us and Napoli are both on nine points. We are playing them today. We beat them at home. Away might be a different story, though. PSV are a team that are outsiders that could potentially get in there. But I'm thinking we've got Celtic in the last one. Celtic haven't picked up a point. We should realistically beat Celtic at home as well on our turf. That will put us on about 12 points. So today kind of decides whether we are going to top the group or not. It's not going to be official because, of course, if we beat Napoli, lose to Celtic and Napoli beat PSV in the next game, goal difference could go a certain way and we might come second. But I reckon if we do win this today, we'll be qualified and hopefully as the top team in the group when it all finally goes through. Now, the thing that as some of you are probably waiting for is the youth intake, and I did get way more responses than I thought I would. Now, we did get a very good youth intake, and before I show it, I'll just let you guys know that when I did this before on another series previously, we got three people who commented. This time I got like 18, 19, something like that. And naturally our youth intake didn't include that many players. So for the people, if you don't see your name in here, the name that you put in the comments, then don't panic, don't worry, because as soon as the next youth intake comes in, I'll finish the rest off and put them 
on the new set of players and who knows they might even be better set of players but our golden generation features the likes of Never Can Said and I will run through these as quick as possible so if you want to see your player then just pause it but we've got Never Can Said which apparently wasn't meant to be a pun but for me that definitely says Never Concede and he is a centre back so that works perfectly. We have then got, of course someone was going to do it, Tiny Cox is, is one of our players. Um, then we've got Luke Thompson, a very good promising left winger. They're probably three of our best, Cox, Kinsade and Thompson. We've then got Ben Henken who also looks like a very good prospect. How many of these will make the first team? I don't know. There's also a very good chance that if we do win the Champions League early, most of these probably won't ever be up to the standard to get into the first team as we are going to be developing very quickly. And as you know, even from real life football, most of the time only one youngster breaks for a year kind of thing. So please don't get your hopes up that you're going to feature in every video. It might just be that one of these players out of the whole list ends up making it into the first team. But I will keep you updated in transfer windows and stuff if we move players on. We've got Jake Fuller now. Just to be aware, I can't change nationality or like skin tone or anything like that. So if this isn't what you look like, then I'm sorry, I can't do anything about it. We've then got Luellino, who I'm hoping I pronounced that right. You guys gave me some hard names here. We've got I don't, Sasuke Uchi. What apparently this is an anime character. I don't know, but someone put the name in the comments. I had to do it. I did it randomly generated. We've got Andres Medina as a goalkeeper who could potentially be a backup goalkeeper for his one season, I'm sure. And finally, we've got Hoob Faber as a Turkish centre midfielder. Now, there's quite a lot of interest in all of our youngsters, mostly from PSG, as we have developed a really good set of players here. I think I've gone through everyone there, all the new generated players. And yeah, with that being said, I'm not going to waste any more time. We're playing Napoli. Let's get straight into the game. Thank you guys for all the support on the series so far. Drop a like. It would really mean a lot because this series is going from strength to strength just because... I thought it wouldn't do well at all, but you guys have shown it so much support that YouTube is pushing it out to more people. More people come in every day to check the series out and are enjoying it a lot. So yeah, let's get straight into the match and see the team that we're using today. Okay, so the team we're using today is this Lavakovic in goal, who's done well for his season. Not spectacular, but he's done well. Selic is at the back, despite me telling him that he's going to get a rest, because apparently I didn't register Valencia for this tournament. I don't have anyone else to play right back in the Champions League. So Selic is at right back with Ahmed Hozic, Benkovic and Aaron Martin. This is pretty much our ideal back line currently. Tien Kupermeyers, who's been brilliant this season, drops to the bench, and Renato Sanchez fills in in his role. And then Cham comes and fills in where Sanchez usually plays. We've got a Kone, Yachi, David and a Rezo with plenty of nice options on the bench. I'd take a draw, a win would be awesome, and a loss doesn't necessarily put us out of it. I would happily just qualify out of the group, but if we can finish first, it just gives us that chance of progressing further, maybe even a quarter-final, and then you never know what can happen from there. I mean, take Chelsea for this season, for example, beat Atletico Madrid, and all of a sudden we've got Porto in the Champions League, who we could potentially beat. That'll put us in the semis, where you've got one of, was it Liverpool or Real Madrid? And I think on our day, we could probably take any of them. Currently, I'm a Chelsea fan, by the way. I'll stop waffling. Let's get into the game and see how today's match goes. Okay, and we are off here at Napoli, and I haven't mentioned him a few times for a few videos, so should I say. We've got Danny Drinkwater, the poster of him in the background, the sign poster. Now, I have tinkered with the idea of potentially signing him in this save but someone did suggest that maybe a youth intake player could be called Danny Drinkwater, and I'm happy with that. When the next youth intake comes through, he will be one of them, and then we will have reborn Danny Drinkwater playing in midfield for us. But unfortunately, I don't think he'd be able to stop this. And Signe looks like a very good player here. He's gone past our whole team one minute in. It's not a great start. I mean, we've been brilliant this season, and I've made two videos so far this season. It could potentially be two losses in a row. Aaron Martin made a dodgy tackle. Lavakovic has done awful there, to be perfectly honest. Was that a fault of Selic being like tired on his side? I don't know. I suggest not, but we're not doing awfully bad here. It's only six minutes in. They just scored with their first chance. Nothing we can really do about that. Just hopefully it doesn't become a big problem in this game and we sort it out quite quickly. But Ossiman is through and it's 2-0 Napoli and all of a sudden, all this praise I've been given the team, it's not looking good. I mean, Ossiman is an absolute beast, by the way. We sold him from Lil. Obviously, I didn't do it, but I believe Lil sold him just before I've taken over him. Football manager, he's a new signing for Napoli. Plenty of money. This is his second season there, of course. We faced him in the Europa League last season where he scored four goals and two legs. And yeah, he's apparently tight offside here, but he was just on. Good finish from him. He's a great striker. And this is a very bad start for us. We need to sort it out. This does show that we've probably got a long way to go before we can challenge for a Champions League, which is good because I don't really want the save to end in two seasons. We're building something here. And I feel like it would be a bit unfair if we did do it with the team that we've currently got. It wouldn't be very realistic. But Napoli have a chance to make it free. Insigne from the free kick. It's been blocked. Out to Ossiman. Insigne's tackle by Yachi. They're going to get a chance out of this though, aren't they? Can we win it back somehow? There he is. This is what he's so good at. Arezo. Haven't seen him all game. He'll definitely finish this though because he never misses. Matthias Arezo. What a beast. He was injured for a little bit. That's why he hasn't scored an insane amount of goals. But this is how he always scores. He's always just 
waiting for the opportunity. He's not even set as a pressing forward, I don't think, but he's just always sniffing out that chance to tackle a player, get onto a touch because of how fast he is. He just sprints through and he, he, I'm, I'm always so confident that he's going to score. Such a good finisher. And Manalas has made it 3-1. 26 minutes in, at least we've got a good game on our hands, but we've been awful here. We've been pretty good defensively this season. In this video, though, not so much. And same in the Super Cup in the last video. We're not really showing ourselves off very good. Maybe we are missing Cooper Mize in the mid midfield there, and Cham could have maybe won that against Manalas there. But oh well, it's 30 minutes in. I'm getting annoyed slightly, but I think we can still turn this around because I've seen how we play this season. We can score goals, so we're definitely not down and out. Renato Sanchez now bursting forward, playing in a different role to what he usually does. And Cham, who's been a very good goal scorer for us this season, plays through David, and it's a good save from ex-Arsenal keeper Ospina in goal there for Napoli. Yeah, she though is going to take the corner. Can we get anything from the follow-up? It doesn't look like it. And 30 minutes in, it looks like we're going to be 3-1 down with a long way back. And Akone does go close with a header, but it is a long way back here for us now. 40 minutes on the clock now, heading into half-time, and we've been the better team in terms of XG, but somehow Napoli with a 0.5 XG, has scored three goals, only three shots on target. We've definitely been very unlucky, and I might make some changes at half-time here just to freshen things up and see if we can potentially turn this around. We're not creating enough chances at all, and Arezo is feeding off of scraps. You know what? Yeah, I'm going to do it now. I'm going to do it half-time. We'll bring Sanchez into his normal position, bring on Cooper Myers. It's been working well for us so far, so why would I change it? I don't know why I did. We're also going to not bring off David. You know what? We're going to take off Yachi. Yachi's not played bad, but Almada has been really good recently. And maybe he can help us turn this around. We'll save another sub for later, just in case Selleck gets injured or something like that. But we'll try this and see if it makes any difference to the game. Okay, team talk complete. Subs brought on. And straight away, we're getting a highlight. If we go 4-1 down, it's a very long way back in one half. Like I said, I'll take a draw though. So we've had a glitch here, haven't we? Two of our players are wearing the wrong kit. The subs that have just came on are wearing either the referee's kit or the away kit for Lilla. I can't really tell. I'm pretty sure that's the referee's kit. So I, I don't know what's going on because now apparently our centre-back's also got it on. It, it's just given a new kit to half of our players. These football manager glitches are very weird. And here is one of the <laughs> the referees are linking up together here. Cooper Meyer is creating a chance for Almada. I don't know what's happening. We're just passing it around. Sanchez, we're going backwards. Cooper Meyer is the one that distributes the ball so well. So he's just waiting for the chance. Selic in a crossing position, back to Armada, Armada with the shot, and my substitution has worked perfectly there. Six goals this season, only three minutes into the half after coming on, Armada wearing the wrong kit is absolutely, that's an absolute worldie, wasn't it? Selic pulled it back, Armada took one touch, and then just lobbed the keeper with a fine finish, it curled, nothing Ospina can do, and we are back in the game, thanks to the new boys who have just came on. And here we go, with a corner straight away, and it's Ahmed Hozic just over. But you can really see, and I know he wasn't involved in that highlight, but in the last highlight, you can really see what Cooper Myers does for this team, the way he just like distributes everything and everything has to come through him. He plays all the passes and gets every single move started. He is brilliant for us this season and really is worth the initial outlay of money that we put into him. He's young too. We'll probably sell him on one day if we get a good offer because he's probably too good to be here right now. We're not at that high enough level yet to keep hold of some of these really amazing players like Aaron Martin, it's going to be a struggle. But we'll get there eventually, and who knows if he'll still be part of the team in the future. Only 15 minutes left, and I was about to make a change, but we're getting a highlight, so we'll wait for this highlight to run through and see what happens. And here is David, he's been quiet today, but he's ran through, and it's a poor shot from David. Been disappointing this season. I had to shoehorn a razor win up front because he's so good, and that pushed David out. He was suggested that he'd be a very good inside forward, and he's not a bad at it. He's just not at the levels that he was when he was up front scoring 20 goals a season. He is potentially one that we might sell on because he's been linked with a £55 million move to Burnley of all places. But £55 million is a lot and I could really reinvest that into the team here and create something really special. But 85 minutes on the clock. Let's make a sub and see if we can change the game round. And it is time for David to come off. We'll bring on Jonathan Bamba as the inside forward. See if he can create anything just with his pace. He's another one and one of our Jonathans that looks like he could be on the way out because he's only meant to be a fringe player at the minute. Not as good as we originally thought he would be, but he is okay in match, so we'll test him out here and see if he can help us get a goal back and rescue a draw. Yeah, our season has been so good so far that I'm not too disappointed if we don't get a win here straight away because, like I say, the group is shaping up nicely and we should qualify for the knockout stages unless something goes horribly wrong, which will mean a lot of money coming into the club here. I think after this game we actually will drop out of the top two. I'll actually have a look and see what happened, but good game from Napoli. It was a close one. We got unlucky. Definitely were the better team in the second half and it was just some first 10-15 minutes that really gave it up. You can see there PSV, our joint level, 
on points with us in second place. However, they have barely any goal difference. We're playing Celtic next, who still haven't picked up a point. Assuming we win there or get a draw, PSV, one of them two, or Napoli, is going to lose. And yeah, we'll definitely qualify, I think, unless something goes horribly wrong. So I think we'll be fine. But we could have won there today and really got top of the group. Let's just have a look in the Champions League and see what kind of clubs we might be competing with in the next stages of the competition. Liverpool and Sporting have qualified from their group, Benfica and Barcelona. Benfica is the top seed, means that we might potentially avoid Barcelona, but it depends how that last game goes there. Inter and Chelsea, Man U and Real Madrid, Rangers topping a group that features the likes of Atletico Madrid and Manchester City. One of them is going to miss out, and it looks like Rangers could potentially be the team that makes it into the next round. They're looking good for it, and I'm pretty sure they lost their best player. They lost Morelos, so... Flair play to Gerrard, whatever he's doing there, he's going to knock out one of the big boys, it seems like. Performing way better than Celtic are in our group, that's for sure. FC Köln have qualified from a group that features Juventus, Porto and Ajax. That means someone's going to miss out there, as well as in this one here where one of Milan, PSG or Dortmund is going to miss out. PSG already qualified and we, of course, can't get put against them. So I think we've got a pretty good chance of getting into the next stage. But when it gets to the knockout stages, there's not many teams there I'd ride fanciers against, considering the performances that we've had away, at least, against Napoli and PSV. We've stayed in the ties, but we're not that good yet. We definitely can't take the likes of Liverpool in the match. We saw that in the Super Cup. They outplayed us, so we'll see how we get on, probably in the next episode. Unless there's a really important league match, I think I, I know I run through these seasons very quick. We're two episodes in, and it looks like the next time I bring it back will be during the January transfer window, so... Whenever the knockout stages get drawn, I might show it, but if the knockout stages are all the way in like March or February, then I'll show a league game in January or something like that. I'll try and get some signings in and we'll see what kind of position we are in come January. Hopefully we'll still be top, but it's going to be a very tough ask. Even though we did lose today, I thought that was a pretty good episode. So if you did enjoy it, smash the like button, comment down below whatever you like, hit the subscribe button and the notification bell if you haven't already. And I'll see you in the next episode, guys. Thank you for all the support. Stay safe and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye.